hello hello now i would like to request uh, from professor venkatesh singh to welcome our esteemed uh, speaker and uh, request him to present his talk professor venkatesh singh can't hear you yes venkatesh sir aapki aapki awaaz nahi aa rahi hai aap mute kiye hain okay so okay let's start this is venkatesh of central university of south bihar gaya namaste and very good morning and very early good morning tapanda today i welcome all of you on behalf of department of physics and the organizing team of this virtual science lecture series which is organized by the department of physics the school of physical and chemical sciences central university of south bihar gaya i would like to thank all the online participants for showing their interest and taking part in the eighth lecture of this series today we have the pleasure of having none other than a world renowned scientist high energy heavy ion expert my senior my very old friend and my big brother dr tapan nayak from european organization for nuclear research cern geneva switzerland with us let us first welcome him from bottom of my heart dr nayak ji will speak on lockdown confinement and the quark gluon plasma this lecture would be beautiful blend of physics philosophy and experiment and should attract huge attention from the knowledge loving technologically oriented physics student and young faculties of our country i welcome you dr tapan nayak ji to this science lecture series dr nayak is physicist and former deputy spokesperson of alice collaboration at cern geneva and visiting professor national institute of science education and research nicer bhuneswar dr nayak is a fellow of two most prestigious science academia of our country he earned his doctorate degree from michigan state university east lansing michigan state usa in year 1920 1990 he was guest scientist at gsi tramstad germany and geneva both scientific officer at variable energy cyclotron center kolkata and visiting professor at homi bhaba national institute hbni mumbai dr nayak is recipient of various national and international scientific awards dr nayak he is well traveled and well known figure in his area of research again i welcome you dr nayak and we are really grateful to you for accepting our request of delivering today's lecture sharing time with us from your busy schedule as i have always mentioned before each lecture that our speakers are internationally renowned and real gem of their area therefore they do not need to go through this his long list of achievements during his introduction however for curious participants we have already uploaded his very short cv on the science lecture series website and facebook with these few words i would like to humbly request dr tapan nayak ji please deliver his talk on lockdown confinement and the quark gluon plasma dr tapan nayak ji please deliver your lecture good morning to all of you and uh, thank you very much uh, venkates uh, professor venkates singh for this uh, very warm um, welcome to me and then um, inviting me for this uh, lecture series i am very happy that you are organizing this lecture series and which at this time especially during this lockdown period and um, uh, this is extremely good for the students and for the faculties and for all of us so i also attended some of your lectures before and today i have the pleasure to present uh, my talk and uh, which will be more like a discussion so and i'll be telling some stories so let me just put the first slide here uh, you i hope you can hear me well so we start now so i chose a topic which is um, 
uh, starting with the lockdown, the word lockdown, and you don't want to know another lockdown because this is going on in our life for last uh, close to four months or five months. Uh, the lockdown continuing off and on all over the world. It's a very unusual situation, and for us to stay home and uh, get our work done. Last time I saw Professor Venkata Singh, I was there in BHU in a school with him with a lot of students, and it was much more exciting to be there in person. But during lockdown, we are all locked down in our own homes, in our own places, and we can't move out. And so it is difficult. So I'll be talking about lockdown in the another world, in our world, in the early universe, then going to deconfinement. Lockdown is like confined. You are confined to your own space, your own home, right? So deconfinement is when you move out. When you move out, mix with people, you become deconfined. And then I'll come to something called quark gluon plasma. So I'll talk in the context of basically basic ingredients, basic buildings of matter, which you, you must have realized by now. So the, I'll go to the quark sector, quark gluon sector. Basically. Just one second. Yes. Bonjour. No, I'm a lecture. Pardon. Papa Sigil Matno. Yeah, Aprimidi. Oui. No, no, no. No, no, Papa Sigil Matno. I'm in mean a lecture, online lecture. No, no, Papa Sigil Matno. Sorry. So somebody wanted to clean my office. Uh, to, uh, yeah. So, okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Very sorry for this. And the scheduled to clean my room because you see this is a lockdown period it's okay boss it's okay yeah if you are coming to your office that means they i have mentioned that i'll be coming to my office from monday regularly so they have scheduled to clean it today and then i which i didn't know so anyhow so this is um, um, this is lockdown so this is interesting time for us so now uh, i'll be talking about um, lockdown in the early universe you see, when we go to, if you start with the Big Bang, time t equal to zero, when the universe started, so it's, the Big Bang started with a very large energy. It's a lot of energy which got um, um, started just to, from a point, just a simple, a huge amount of energy. And very quickly, a lot of things are happening. So you have uh, um, four fundamental forces that are all united. And then you, you go to the fundamental particles which got created. And then you have the quartz and gluons, and very quickly quartz and gluons they get united, they get come together, and then they become, um, you know, hadrons. So I will start with um, uh, the fundamental forces first, and then I'll go to fundamental. Uh, I'll go to the particles and quartz and gluons. Okay. So by, basically, for this lecture, you need to know two things. Uh, I mean, fundamental forces and the constituents of matter, uh, fundamental constituents of matter. So first is fundamental forces, which are the forces in nature. So you have four fundamental forces in nature. So one is gravity, so gravitational force, which is basically acting between two massive body. Then the gravity we all know, we all experience every day. The second one is the weak force, the weak force is basically it is in the nucleus. If you have the example is the beta decay, which the students must be studying in high schools and college. And this is weak in nature, short range force. It acts between fundamental particles. Then we go to something called the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force is the most um, uh, useful for all of us in daily life. So today I could talk to you because of the electromagnetic force. So this electromagnetic force acts between electric or magnetic charges. The stronger force with the long range, it's attractive, it can be attractive or repulsive depending on the, uh, the, the sign of the things you're talking about, positive or negative. Then the last one is called the strong force. The strong force, it holds the atomic nucleus and binds the quarks together. So inside the nucleus, you have the uh, quarks and the quarks are inside, I mean, they are, held together by the strong force. So this is strongest and short range force. This is basically attractive. 
So these are the four fundamental forces. In the beginning of the universe, it was one force. And then slowly, slowly they get uh, um, disintegrated. This, they got their own identity. So they became, when they um, went to gravity, weak, electromagnetic, and strong force. Uh, you must be hearing about a lot of gravitational force, gravitons, and all that uh, recently. Because these other three forces, they could be united through um, from Einstein time. And gravity is the only one which was left out. So we're trying to get all the four forces together. Now, next one I go to after the special, after the forces, I go to the structure of matter. This, all of you also know, you have the matter, and the matter consists of molecules. Then you go to atoms. Atoms are about you know, 10 to the minus 8 centimeter angstrom size. Then you go to nucleus. The nucleus is at the center. You can see my cursor. The nucleus is at the center. Then you have the electrons circling around the nucleus. And the nucleus consists of neutrons and protons, like this one, neutrons and protons. You can imagine the inside the nucleus, you have neutrons and protons, and protons are positively charged particles, and neutrons are zero. How so many positive charged particles can be held together? The strong force. Then if you go inside the nucleus, you have the, or the nucleons, the protons and neutrons, you have the quarks. So you can see the three quarks which is shown here with some blobs here called gluons, which are acting in between the quarks. So quarks are inside the, the new, new, neutrons and protons. Quarks are called confined. Quarks are actually the quarks are locked down. So next two, three slides, I'll be spending on the lockdown of the quarks inside the neutrons and protons, okay? The sizes of the neutrons, protons are 10 to the minus 13 centimeter, and the quarks are 10 to the minus 18 centimeter. So this lambda equal to S by P, this is the de Broglie relationship. We all know about it. If you have the lambda is the size, P is the momentum. If you want to look at a smaller size, you have to go to large and large energy. So to see a nucleus, you go to a cyclotron, which exists in many places. Uh, there is a small machine also in BHU. There is a machine in, in Calcutta, cyclotron center, where I, where this is my, my place. In Calcutta, we have a big cyclotron. You can study the nuclear properties, protons, neutrons. But if you want to look at the quarks, you have to go to very, very, very high energy. So that's the idea. Now, this way the discovery happened, you all know about the discovery of a nucleus. Rutherford discovered more than 100 years back, 1911. Then protons discovered 1919. 10 or 12 years after that is a neutron by Chadwick. So you see so many things happened in between. It took, took so much time. And then there are pions, muons, skeons, and all that happened. And then 1964, you have the quarks. Quarks are proposed by Gelman and Zweig. Gelman got the Nobel Prize for it in 1969. The quark, this proposal, in the 1968, we had the experiments, deep in scattering experiment in Slack in USA. They were found the, they discovered the experiment of the quarks. This was by Friedman, Kendall, and Taylor. Um, Venkatas? Yes, sir. Can, oh, I, yes. Take, can I take five, five minutes break? I Maybe I move out to another office because they're starting a vacuum cleaner. They're cleaning the place. So give me five minutes okay. and move to another place. Okay, okay. thank sure, you. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Okay, thanks. Sorry about this. This is 
unexpected and during lockdown yeah they have the high priority because the they right have right. to keep so be there in 2 minutes Okay. Can you still hear me, Mangabas? Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfectly fine. Okay. I can hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm so sorry. This is very unusual. Okay. So, okay. So I continue. and okay i continue you can see my slides uh, hopefully so i'll continue so as i was telling so we have uh, starting from uh, beginning of the century last century you have uh, many things you have the starting from electrons to protons to neutrons then many small uh, not small very important discoveries in between with nobel prizes and all that 64 quarks proposal by uh, Gelman Joeg in 1964, 68. The experimental verification that quarks really exist. The experiment, the way the experiment happened, is similar to the Rutherford experiment. You just we had a uh, higher energy, deep energy scattering, electron-proton scattering. They showed smaller entities inside the nucleons, which were called quarks. The way the quarks are, so we have quarks. So we have right now we know about six quarks. six different types of quarks you have the up quark down quark charm quark strange quark top and bottom a truth and beauty physicists are very good in naming the particles uh, fundamental particles so they give the name quarks then the up down charm strange top bottom then the quarks are like fractional charges you have the electrons which is, uh, which is charge of plus 1 a uh, minus 1 positive and plus 1 and quarks are fractional so you have two third charge For U C T, and then you have the fractional charge for D S B, a minus one third charge. Then there is another property of the quarks. It's mathematics. These are in fine books. Um, already you can read about it. Quarks come in three colors, not real colors. It's another type of degrees of freedom, and another type of quantum number is given to them: red, green, or blue. So red, uh, these up charge. truth all these quarks can come in any of the colors and the anti quarks anti particles like the particles and anti particles quarks and anti quarks so anti quarks are anti colors like anti red anti green and anti blue so if you mix uh, color red green and blue they become colorless like inside a proton you have three quarks red green and blue and they so proton is colorless neutron is colorless It's like that. It works like that. So, what happens is I was talking about lockdown or quark confinement. So, inside the protons and neutrons, you have three quarks: two up, one down, red, green, and blue. So, proton becomes colorless. Let's call it yeah, colorless. And neutron also red, green, and blue. One up, two down. So, neutron one up is plus one two third, 
down is minus one third, so it becomes charge zero, proton is charge equal to one. So the quarks are always locked down within the hadrons. The quarks cannot come out. So quarks are confined. This is called confinement. They are completely confined. And the color force, what happens is if you increase the force, let's say you want to increase the force so they can come out, the color force, the, um, the magnitude of the force increases with distance and the energy required to separate them produces another quark or anti-quark pair. So it becomes, again, it's very difficult to separate them. I will have a demonstration about this in the next couple of slides, how they're confined and they can't come out. So what happens is, no one has seen a free quark because it's extremely difficult to free the, free the quark. So we have seen proton, neutron in our experiments, electrons you know, but a quark has been never seen um, uh, freely. So what happens is this is called confinement. Then there is another thing called asymptotic freedom. Inside the proton neutron, the interaction between quarks and uh, in between quarks are very small. So they move almost freely within their house. Imagine this is your lockdown house. Your house is a proton and you have you, your family living together up to uh, three, three of you. And inside the house, you're free to move around, do anything you like, but you can't come out. So they are completely locked down. Imagine now locking lockdown of our stage is so difficult. Imagine protons, uh, within protons and neutrons, quarks are all, always locked down since the beginning of the universe and they have never been free since then. So this is called lock confinement, then the asymptotic freedom. These, three, these two properties of this quantum chromodynamics, it is called, are discovered 1973 and 1975. These uh, Gross, Wilczek, and Polizor, they got Nobel Prize in 2004, just for the discovery of asymptotic freedom and deconfinement. Now, if you go beyond, so what happens? Let, let me give one small example or demo how it happens. Let's say you have a proton. It's proton which is color neutral. So you have a red, green, and blue. So this, inside the proton, these three quarks are moving around freely. They're completely freely. They're bouncing back from the walls of the protons. So they're inside. They can't come out. Now imagine this is called color force. Because of the color, it's called color force. Or in QCD, you can have you can write down the expression of the force in a, in, a, in a proper way. So you increase the energy. You give huge amount of energy. So what happens? If you give enough energy, so it is like a big string, strong color force, so like a big string. So the string you give, so you, you can separate them. At some point, what happens, like a tug of war, the string breaks. The string, the, the force is so much that it can't hold it, it breaks. When it breaks, a lot of energy. So when the, in a tug of war, two, two guys fall down. So when they, they don't fall down here, this huge amount of energy, it creates another quark and anti-quark. So what happens is after within a very short time, this quark or anti-quark, they move to different parts. They form again a proton and another imagine, let's say pion. Pion is two quarks, so imagine a quark and anti-quark, and here you have three quarks. It's very interesting because you can't really separate them. They come out, come back to their own place and uh, when they're inside, they're free. When they when you try to pull them apart, they create more quark anti quark pair. So they come back again, get locked down in their, in their houses. So one of our thoughts, this is called quantum chromodynamics, like quantum electrodynamics, because you study about the electricity magnetism, this is quantum chromodynamics. So like the electromagnetic interaction, I talked about four forces. You have the gravity, weak, electromagnetic, and uh, strong. Electromagnetic interaction, you have a positive charge, negative charge. So charge field lines can go from, go from positive to negative like this. And in the color force, in, in the QCD, you have the quarks and the gluons are like that. Gluons are mediating like that. So there is a potential which looks like this. So you can uh, write down theories I've written down and the potential and then describe how the quarks are confined and what happens when you try to pull them apart. Now, what happened is that we scientists, experimentalists in around 70, late 70s, beginning 80s, 
decided we want to free the quartz. We want to see when we free the quartz, how the system would look like. In the beginning of the universe, within a microsecond, the quartz were actually free. Then they became locked down. So we wanted to see a system where in the left side you have the hadron gas. Hadron is a proton or neutron, that kind of particles. So they are in hadron gas, you have proton, neutron like that. They're inside the lockdown state. So they are locked down, in fact. You apply huge amount of energy to this one, this system, very, very large energy, or you compress them very hard. Increase the temperature, do whatever you like. So the boundary goes out. When the boundary goes out, it becomes a system which is like out the right side. It just, there is no boundary, no proton, no neutron, only quarks were free inside the this whole sphere, whole system. This is, these are quarks. In, in between the mediation is by gluons and it's a plasma because they are in the same stage, in a similar state throughout. There is no boundary, nothing like that. So this is called a quark gluon plasma, which existed in the beginning of the universe. So we can def de define this one, this is the new definition of, or our definition of quark gluon plasma. It's a thermally equilibrated system of matter with quarks and gluons, uh, which are deconfined uh, from the hadrons so that the color degrees of freedom is evident. This is uh, the main goal of uh, my research. And in India, we have a uh, 14 institutes and a big, big uh, involvement in the quark gluon plasma research from the beginning, from the 70s, 80s, both in theory and in experiment, we have been working on that. I'll give an example of this one today. So this is hadron gas on the left side, quark gluon plasma, this is our goal. So just wanted to illustrate uh, this, uh, this, what happens in the beginning of the universe, how everything started and what is the relevant of relevance of quark gluon plasma. If you look at the leftmost, uh, this bottom, the point here, this is the big bang, time t equal to zero. Time starts from here. Not, I don't know what happened be beyond before that, a lot of theories, a lot of debate going on what happened before the big bang, but let's concentrate on time t equal to zero. And this picture, you see the beautiful picture, uh, the disk is like this thing. This, if you type Big Bang or NASA or something like that, you'll see a picture like this. This is called cosmic microwave background radiation, CMB, cosmic microwave background radiation, CMBR, which has been experimentally um, uh, determined by telescopes and the satellites and mostly by telescopes. It gives a temperature fluctuation map, a very beautiful map. But from time t equal to zero, you have to go to 380,000 years to see this one. At that point, this, this existed at that point only. And then if you go beyond, we are here right now, today. Today we are at a time which is 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang. Big Bang time t equal to zero. We are at 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang. The size of the Big Bang at t equal to zero was, size was zero. Now we have a size of the universe, which is 10 to the power 28 centimeter. It's a big universe. And the universe is expanding, still expanding. It's not static yet. So this, when you come out, to, but a lot of things happens within one minute of the Big Bang only. We see only what we are today after so many years, but within a few microseconds, many things have happened. Let's expand onto this region what happened and the relevance of the quark gluon plasma. If I expand that, I get a picture like this. I have now rotated this picture. So bottom one is time t equal to zero, the Big Bang. The top one is where we are 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang. In the beginning, time, let's say time, very time equal to zero or 10 to the minus 43 seconds, the temperature is 10 to the power 19 giga electron volt. One electron volt is about 11,000 degrees Celsius um, or Fahrenheit is uh, the similar or Kelvin, let's say. So then you have the temperature, very high temperature and the temperature starting to cool down and we're at a temperature of 2.7 Kelvin, very low temperature of the universe. So this, this is what the temperature is after this time. But in the beginning, it was very hot. Uh, matter. Grand unification was there. That means all four forces were united. It's called grand unification. And then within 10 to the minus 35 seconds, 
then slowly slowly you have the electroweak phase transition you have the strong force which gets um, quark hadron transition like that happen till a time of one microsecond microsecond is very quick very fast so universe started within a microsecond till a microsecond we had the matter changed to many parts but in the here around here you had the quarks and gluons mostly quarks and gluons then within a microsecond or around a microsecond this temperature was 1 gv 1 giga electron volt and then immediately the um, quark hadron transition took place quarks realized that they are very free which they can't be so they got together they formed the hadrons and the hadrons um, um, the transition happened at that point and within few minutes you have the nucleus formed the nucleosynthesis happened and then you have you know, carbon iron all the matter formed up, up, afterwards and then 380000 years after that one you have the cosmic microwave background radiation which i told a little bit before and then continuing till now so the goal of our research is to look at what happened around a microsecond after the big bang how the matter was was it a liquid or is was it a gas what is the viscosity what is the what is the characteristics nature of the matter at that point so this is this which i told you about the phase transition going from quark structure to the hadron structure it's called a phase transition it's a different phase of matter so what is a phase of matter let's look at that so we all know about solid which let's say ice is a solid liquid is the water gas is the steam so we have solid you add energy give temperature increases that becomes liquid temperature increases you add energy temperature increases that becomes gas you can add much much more energy that can become a plasma so plasma is like in stars so you have a huge amount of gaseous medium and a lot of nuclear reactions taking place in the stars that is the plasma there is another type of plasma which we recently hear about Uh, plasma transfusion of the of treating the coronavirus covid 19 disease that's the blood plasma let's not confuse with that blood plasma i wrote because people are talking about plasma these days plasma therapy and all that but our plasma is a gaseous substance consisting of free charged particles such as electrons protons or ions the plasma so these are different phases of matter you can think about so now what happens let's look at how the phase works so we have a solid liquid and gas so in water in water the phase diagram on the left side if you can look at at the you know, atmospheric pressure you have um, you can go below 0 degree temperature in the x in the y axis uh, is the temperature x as the you add energy so let's say you have ice at negative temp uh, temperature uh, low temperature then you add heat add energy temperature goes up so then become something like a latent heat here then you have a heating of the water at 100 degrees celsius what happens if you have you take a burner you take a and you heat up water after 100 degree the temperature is not increasing and all the energy which is created that is making vapors or gas so that's the at the boiling point it remains like that for long 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 time till you do something else to it so this is the gas or vapor at the boiling point this is um, the latent heat and if you give, instead of atmospheric pressure if you increase the pressure or decrease the pressure as a function of temperature many interesting things happen you have something called a triple point you you can de reduce the pressure you go to the mountains you reduce the pressure and you will see the water uh, boiling temperature instead of 100 degree is going down and down and at some temperature which is let's say 0.01 degree celsius and a low pressure low pressure you have something called a triple point and you will see the ice and the water and the steam they are existing at the same time you see all three at the same time this is called the triple point then you increase at very high pressure and very high temperature you have something called a critical point critical point is where this transition this phase transition from solid to liquid or gas this is called a fast order phase transition this is coming from um, here the latent heat fast or phase transition but at beyond that is something called a continuous transition or second order transition is the critical point around that that time the fast and second order or the continuous transition there is no distinction between all three so this is what this way the phase transition 
okay we can describe the this the similar way in terms of our quartz and gluons so we also make a, a similar phase diagram we increase the temperature or we increase the energy and try to see what happens to the temperature in the hadronic matter we give lot and lot of energy the temperature increases 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 to some point beyond some point temperature cannot increase anymore because the pions are formed so there is something called a limiting temperature what if you give much more energy the temperature goes to form the energy goes to form quartz and gluons on the right side so up to some energy the temperature is increasing and beyond that it becomes a quartz gluon plasma and be much beyond that you have the stefan boltzmann law uh, takes over so all that you can you can we can discuss so this is a phase transition in the quartz gluon plasma you have the hadronic matter at low temperature low energy density at high temperature high energy density you have the quartz and gluons so this is what our research is and i can show you a beautiful picture of the phases of the nuclear matter x axis is the density going from zero very low density to high density matter y axis is the temperature going from zero degree temperature to very high temperature our early universe beginning of the universe we started with a very very high temperature and then it cooled down to to where we are right now we are about here right now and then you have um, the phase transition you can you can you can draw the phase diagram like this very high density of the neutron stars very low temperature high density neutron stars and beyond that there are some some theories theories to discuss something called color superconductor and uh, but this is the phase diagram line which we are interested to discover and be this is the hadron gas beyond this quark gluon plasma this phase diagram line from here to here is supposed to be phase is a fast order phase transition then here it's a crossover transition and we we also have something called a critical point one of the field of main research for many of us uh, and personally for me we i started with working on the search for the critical point and we start to see some signature of the critical point in our in our field of research and, uh, and this is what we want to discover there are a lot of experiments which going on all around the world lot of facilities to to study this one and uh, one is called the large hadron collider at cern i'll show you some pictures of this one that mimics something which happened in the beginning of the universe very high temperature low density matter then relativistic heavy and collider uh, collider at brookhaven national laboratory that spans a region like this very broad region to probe the critical point and study the uh, and to find the nature of the matter in future in a, in a few years we have a fair facility coming up in germany which is going to look at high density matter in this region and there are many others there is a facility coming up in dubna called nika there is a facility in japan so many facilities coming up the main thing is that these are very uh, large scale enterprise very cost lot of money lot of scientific uh, scientific uh, time and engineering expertise so what happens is that not a single country can do it so most of these experiments are combination of different countries supported by different countries collaborations and like like that large hadron collider is one of the biggest uh, enterprise which is by more than 100 countries support and uh, they they make it work here the lower energy side there is another critical point which also looked at uh, uh, michigan state university when i was looking for my PhD, doing my phd we had look we are looking for this critical point then gsi dam start vcc calcutta we are studying this part of the low energy matter nuclear physics now at high energy we are looking at quarks and gluons going beyond how we create this quarks and gluons we have, we need high energy accelerator as i told you de broglie lambda equal to h by p you want to look at um, quarks and gluons so the temperature or the the sizes of the quarks and gluons are very small so we need a very very high energy accelerator to 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 look for those things so you have you are accelerating particles from the left and from the right as a collision happens here so many particles are getting emitted 
So E equal to mc square, when the collision happens, we have a lot of energy, matter gets produced. So what we do, we collide proton, proton, and this is an illustration of colliding heavy ion. Heavy means gold or lead, that kind of ion. They collide. When they collide, a lot of energy uh, gets emitted from the energy particles get emitted. So these things we have in the collider, we, we collide the particles. Then we have the experiments all around to measure what comes out of it. After the measurement, then we can recreate and try to find out what happened at the collision time. Now we know we have discovered co the quad lone plasma. To be the year 2000, we did the first uh, announcement from CERN from our old experiments of SP at, uh, SPS, W98 experiment from India. We are involved in that one. And uh, then beyond 2004, 2005, the Relativity Avian Collider RIC at Brookhaven National Laboratory, they confirmed the formation of the quadrilon plasma. Now at LHC, we see quadrilon plasma. C means we, we know there is a quadrilon plasma. We do more and more work with that. We try to understand more and more about it a large hadron collider at Southern Geneva. Okay, I hope things are clear by it till now. So I'll go to show a few experiments, collider and experiment. The relativity Avian collider, which is at Brookhaven National Laboratory, it is, um, a, um, it, it is running at 200 GeV per nucleon. So the whole thing starts from a small LINAC, goes to one ring, another ring. So we have two major experiments. Phoenix and star. Uh, in the Phoenix experiment, the BHU group, uh, Banaras in the University and BRC from Bombay have been involved. In the star experiment, we have uh, seven or eight uh, institutes, universities uh, from India, which have been involved. These experiments continuing. Phoenix uh, closed some years back. That used to be in the beginning four experiments and Phoenix and star were running. Phoenix close, a new form of Phoenix is coming up within a year, but STAR is still taking data to understand the quadrilon plasma much more detail and the critical point. This is one picture of the STAR experiment in which we put a detector called photon multi detector. You can see the size of the detector we made in India and uh, took it there, took data for several years. Now, now we have decommissioned it and uh, very interesting data also, which is we published some data are still being analyzed in the star experiment. We saw onset of phase transition. Now we are looking at the source for the critical point. Okay, now I come to CERN. This is a picture of CERN from the front gate, main gate. You see a globe here. This is the exhibition ground. And beyond that, um, there are mountains and the airport is beyond that. The tram lines coming, coming here. It's a beautiful, interesting place to be. Uh, for, for experimentalists, for theories, for engineers, for, for anybody. There are 15 to 18,000 people who are cut CERN and uh, regularly. And um, yeah, these days, because of the lockdown, you don't see so many people or cars. It's very quiet today, especially, and because of the weekend and also because of the lockdown. And uh, here, this, uh, this, this facility is in the border of Switzerland and France. And it's three quarters in France and uh, one quarter in Switzerland, but uh, near Geneva. And so we we are uh, we are bound by Swiss and French laws. Son is bound by Swiss and French rules. And India became a member, associate member, since the year 2017. And from which we got quite a bit of advantage because we can collaborate in a much better way with equal partnership. And also we can get access to all the technology, all the Axular technology for medical physics for uh, for any uh, any um, anything like that from from Sorn as as equal partner. Now Sorn has the Large Hadron Collider. Many of you must have heard about it because this is news for last several years. This uh, this is the airport. You can see that airport picture. This picture from the top, and the circle you see here, this big circle. This is called the Large Hadron Collider. It is below the ground. 50 to 150 meters below the ground. And you see accelerator, this is the largest accelerator in the world, 27 kilometer, this tunnel, 27 kilometer tunnel. And the place I'm sitting right now is here in the, in the bottom part. And uh, you can go around 27 kilometer to see these uh, 
all four major experiments. The first experiment at point one is called Atlas. The second experiment is called Alice, where our experiment, me, I am working, and many of from India are working, uh, looking for coagulant plasma, specializing on that one. CMS has a big participation from India as well. LHCB is another experiment. Atlas and CMS, they discovered the Higgs boson, the God particle, people call it popularly. LHCB is looking for matter-antimatter symmetry. Why there is not equal amount of matter and antimatter? In the beginning, it was there, but why it doesn't exist now? What happened to the antimatter? And Alice is looking for coagulant plasma and experimenting to understand what happens. So this, uh, let's see, the world's largest and most powerful. It started operating in 2009. It was built in the year, in 10 years, to 1998 to 2008. It started, the, the tunnel already existed from the earlier lab collider. So they used the tunnel, which is 27 kilometers, the big advantage. So because of that, they could build the whole facility in 10 years. It has 10,000 scientists and engineers working on that to make the collider to make the experiments and uh, theories to understand what is going on over more than 100 countries. And looking for, so hadron, large hadron collider, because collides proton, proton, and the proton on lead, lead on lead, now recently xenon on xenon, and we have a proposal to collide other ions as well, to look for different types of physics. The tunnel, if you go underground, it looks like this. 27 kilometers of tunnel looks like this. The, it's a 50 to 150 meter below the ground. Two beams, one beam goes this way, another beam another way, they circulate and they collide at opposite direction. 9,300 magnets, out of that 1,800 large superconducting magnets, it's really a, a proud moment for us because yeah, from India we could, uh, we participated and made many of the magnets in India and the superconductive magnets and tested and installed. And most of these equipments, electronics, including the small um, jacks on which all the things are sitting are made in India. So basically it has the electric field which speeds up the particle, this acceleration and the magnetic field which is bending them. So that's all, the large electric field and large, large magnetic field in the tunnel. And just I want to show you a small demo of how it happens, uh, the actually the, everything starts from a small Linux, which is which exists in VCC Calcutta or BHU, and then it goes to the energy goes up and up to a small synchrotron. It goes to a large synchrotron SPS, which uh, had a lot of discoveries, W and Z boson discovery got Nobel Prize. Now the Large Hadron Collider, many experiments. Uh, this simulation is done for. Atlas experiment, you will see particles are moving like protons. It's basically protons, it's simulation only, moving. They will collide now, and in the Atlas environment, you see protons with three quarks, they, they collide. Okay, when they collide, a lot of particles coming out. This is proton and protons, so number of particles in hundreds. When I go to lead and lead, number of particles will be in thousands. So number of particles you see, these are coming out. And from there, you select very, very high momentum selective particle when you discover the Higgs boson or the God particle. And they're now doing a lot of experimentation with that, uh, that thing. Okay, so this was a small demo just to show how these things are working. Now, now I go back to my talk. So I go to the, in the Alice collaboration, which is mostly specializing on the coagulant plasma, other experiments also look at problem plasma, but we specialize. In our collaboration, we have 174 institutes from 39 countries. We have close to 2,000 students, postdocs, scientists, professors, and engineers. And you can see the, the spread. India, we have a major share from India, more than 100 countries. This India here, 100, 100 uh, scientists, engineers, students, 125 um, number as of now. We, from India, we participate from 14 different institutes from Calcutta, Aligarh, Bhubaneswar, Chandigarh, Gohati, Indore, Jammu, Jaipur, Mumbai. So we have, we are funded by DAE and DST, and we have a very large contribution to ALICE, to the physics, and uh, many students graduated and were settled all over the country and doing extremely well. So now, this is how the um, Alice experiment looks like. 
if you go underground this is a photograph you see you see this photograph this is about 16 meters wide 16 meters uh, tall and 26 meters in the depth this red point red ones are, are the magnets this magnet weighs about uh, 7000 ton this whole experiment is more than 10000 ton more than the eiffel tower more the magnet is similar to the eiffel tower iron it's a big uh, chunk of iron that's the magnet then at the center you have the particles moving you don't see that the beam pipe now because this the photograph was taken when the beam pipe is out so beam pipe comes up to here from the from both side into the board and outside the screen uh, out to the screen the collision happens at this point at the center point at the vortex this is called the vortex when the particles are coming out you have silicon detectors very high sensitive the silicon detectors about like our um, touch screen many sensors you have billions of sen sensors around this point which measures particles then you have a large gas detector called time projection chamber this is multi wire proportional counters now it will be a jam detector uh, and uh, we participate in this uh, tpc from india as well from from after beyond tpc we have several layers of detectors the something called trd there is a time of flight detector to measure the, to give the particle identification then there is a cal calorimeter to measure the energy at the end the photon multiplicity detector in which uh, we participated in india that was from one side and the muon chamber was to the other side this is how a sketch and the, this is pmd in which we uh, participated from india is completely indian detector we made the detector built the detector in india brought it here took data and now analysis is going in full swing in india so this is make in india made in india and uh, instrumented in india bringing to um, uh, geneva taking data analysis is done in also in india so we participate in all of all the full analysis of everything we, although we have only one detector and second detector we we made called muon chamber where a part of the muon chamber the second station is completely made in aligarh muslim university and science institute and uh, pmd is a collaboration of many institutes this is calcutta iop and many other institutes so in one slide from india we contributed we call photon multiplicity detector you see the size of the detector and some of our collaborators so during the installation time on the middle you will see muon tracking chamber my colleagues from saha institute uh, are posing in front of our detector this is one quarter of the detector which is installed um, in the cavern and still taking data and we'll take data for next 10 years we in the process we contributed heavily to electronics we made something called a manas chip is it's made in saha institute the first large scale production of asic in india it is used in with the pmd muon arm and many other um, detectors uh, still used and will be used for a long time we com we contributed for future uh, which is coming up now data acquisition system the data we take which is going we are going to take next year we will be taking 3 terabyte of data per second my laptop here is half a terabyte but we will be taking 3 terabyte per second how to reduce the data volume and how to take uh, uh, store the data we cannot store 3 terabyte per second we can store around 100 gb per second so that we made something called a unit which is we, we helped in design from vcc uh, and calcutta university in uh, in 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 india and collaborated at son and uh, france uh, hungary so made this one and we made many parts uh, in in the country and this is this is working right now we have a new proposal which is just approved last uh, month in fact and this we started working on this in 2008 we made the first proposal to make a silicon tungsten calorimeter this is completely i would say uh, the way we conceived the pmd this we conceived the silicon tungsten calorimeter in india we made the silicon detectors in bell bangalore and we made the readout in brc we put together in calcutta vcc and did the uh, test beam in main test beams at son we made this some something called a forward calorimeter this is now going to take data after 5 years we participate in large scale data uh, called lsc grid computing which i will show in a while 
how am I doing timing wise? Okay, I'll be a little late. So, um, so okay, I have to speed up a little bit. In the collision, we have the highest collision, 5.02 tera electron volt lead on lead collision. It's called one peta electron volt collision. In the collision, you see so many particles are coming out. In each collision, it's about 20,000, 30,000 particles coming out. The job of our experimental is to measure this measurement. This is actually one measurement display, one event. And in the experiment, we take thousands of events every second. That's why the data volume is so large. You have to keep track of everything these are tracking. These every particle is different. This is a tracking, you can find the particle ID. And they make these beautiful uh, pictures, uh, uh, which we are familiar in India. In our festivals, we make this type of pictures, uh, Jyoti or something we call it. And this is because of the magnetic field and the charged particles move in a magnetic field in a particular way. So they become very nice pattern. So from this one, we can try to find out many properties of the matter, what happens in the beginning of the collision. And uh, we make pictures like this in the collision. When they're moving at the speed of light, they have their, they are like disks, they collide, and they go through different phases, a quark gluon plasma, hadron phase, the phase transition happened. And then we get a picture like this in the experiment. And from this experimental measurement, we try to go back and see what happens in the beginning of the reaction. First thing is to find out how many particles are coming out. What is their energy? What is the temperature? So I'll give you only two, three examples of this one. So before I go there, I, we have some, these are nucleus are very large. When they collide like this, we, in nuclear physicists, many of you are studying nuclear physics, you have something called impact parameter. This, let's say this is a lead nucleus moving at the speed of light, almost the speed of light, like a pancake, it's a Lorentz contracted pancake. The center of it is the center. This center to that center is called impact parameter. The head-on collision impact parameter is zero. In the peripheral collision impact parameter is large. So in the head-on collision, I get a lot of particles. We get the real quark gluon plasma. Now in the beginning, now recently we start to see quark gluon plasma and proton proton collision. But lead lead also we see lead lead mainly we see in the PP we start to see also. So in this in the region which is colliding, it's called participants. This is quark gluon plasma. The region which don't collide, these are called spectators. So we have, we measure something called a number of participants, not measure, indirectly we estimate. With respect to that, we study uh, what happens in a central collision to a peripheral collision, head-on collision to a grazing collision. As you can see in this slide here, the y-axis is the number of particles produced per event in a, in a window, and the x-axis is the, let's say, theta angle, or eta angle, we call it eta, or the angle um, the, when which the particles are coming out. We get close to 25 to 30,000 particles in every event. So the, y, uh, the, uh, the right side picture is the central collision. We get about 23,000 particles in this collision. And the peripheral collision, now we get about few, 10, 20, 30 particles, like that. So we get a large number of particles, very large number of produced particles in every event. Central collision about 21,000, peripheral collision about 230,000, about 230. It's a big difference. So we concentrate to, to find out what is the difference between the matter formed in central, compare that to peripheral. From that comparison, we can find out if there is a quark gluon plasma in central collision. Now, from this number of particles, we can estimate the energy density. This was given a formalism by Bjorken. Some of you who are physics students will be knowing about him. In, the, in this calculation, from the number of particles, we calculate something called the energy density. This energy density is 16 GeV per Fermi cube, which is ab about 20 to 30 times more than normal nuclear matter density. Normal nuclear matter density 0.7 GeV per Fermi cube. We get, let's say 16, at least 16 or beyond. So theories have said that if you have um, at least 10 times more than the normal nuclear matter density, that's a quark gluon plasma. And we see that. This is largest energy density achieved. Now we make many spectrum, momentum spectrum of pions, kaons, protons, many, many particles like that. They give you this, this spectra, give you many information about the temperature, 
about the nature of matter which which came out before i mean instead of going to the details let me give you only one example of the spectrum of the photon spectrum uh, and the coulomb plasma temperature this from india we have pioneered to in the theory and in the experiment to measure the photon spectrum and the qgb temperature this qgb these are called direct photons photons coming from the beginning of the reaction this photon spectrum if you make they look like this and if you the slope parameter of this one gives the temperature this temperature is 304 million electron volt one electron volt is 11000 degree 11000 degree celsius or kelvin and you see the core of the sun the core of the sun on the picture here the solar core temperature is 27 million degree celsius this the sun is like a huge plasma lot of nuclear energy getting uh, uh, just reactions taking place um, uh, nuclear reactions and that's a huge blob of temperature and plasma that temperature is 27 million degree celsius and in our experiment we create uh, 3 million uh, degrees uh, uh, celsius that means more than 100000 times more than 100000 times what is at the core of this sun this is the highest temperature largest ever temperature we could measure indirectly of course there is no i mean we couldn't put a thermometer this is a indirect thermometer which gives us the temperature so that means these two and there are there are many others uh, there is something called a jets when the, when the particles collide the jets is a, a concentrated particle no, um, uh, charged particles they come out called jets when they come out on one direction they come they just directly come out when they go through the medium they are suppressed we measure the suppressed to find out yes we have created a high density matter in the in the in the medium high density medium so this is called jets using these three four there are many signatures we know that we have found the pargolon plasma the high density matter which are there in the beginning of the universe all these advances in science engineering and everything happened and the way we communicate during the lockdown we are all using smartphones we are using the world wide web because of which we communicate that came out because of the discovery of www at cern in 1990 because during that time cern used to collaborate with lot of um, uh, countries lot of people sitting in very far away so they wanted to communicate the communication medium the starter is www now everybody is using is www so this is one major advantage somebody asks you what are you doing with your tax payers money for the you know, fundamental science you can say that there are lot of discoveries which you don't know now which can have a big use in future so this is what uh, how we can justify our um, research one is www the second one many of you know don't know www almost everybody knows that it is for sun you see this cell phone which i am using right now the touch screen you just type touch screen in the wikipedia you will go to frank beck and ben strumpel their engineers at cern they developed the touch screen 1970s transparent touch screen idea now without that we can't survive all the apps everything the arogya app which we use for um, for our lockdown period in india they all in the in the touch screen without that we can't survive now this was discovered at sun so the, the 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 research you are doing you all are involved you are going to be involved you don't know when the usefulness is going to come at some point at sun our experiment i'm very happy that the number of engineers is is outnumbered compared to the physicists because the way we are building we have the civil mechanical computing all types of engineers who are involved in the whole thing and i give you one example of medical application the way sun is helping the particle accelerator the hadron therapy the hadron therapy which which treats uh, the cancer the tumors and all that so imagine we have only a, a big center in the tmc in bombay tata memorial they they treat cancer now in one or two places we are getting hadron therapy in the country imagine we have hadron therapy in every state and to treat uh, the major diseases just that because today we have covid corona the cancers have not gone away but uh, they are all there so we have to be, uh, get treated so this is where sorn is playing a major role and the technology and everything we can get directly from sorn because we are now members or associate members of sorn medical imaging you can imagine all the sensors we are doing the silicon sensors we made at uh, bangalore 
BRC. That can be, uh, that has a lot of use for medical imaging. Then data, the big data, the big data because of the, uh, because of this WWW and we have the grid computing facility. Now in India, in Calcutta and Bombay, we have major facilities, grid computing facilities where we store data and health grid data. Now India, NKN and others are getting used in a big way. So CERN and uh, not only CERN and major experimental facilities in India and around the world, they are playing a major role in the, for the societal benefits. Just coming to the timeline, how we are doing for the LHC, what more we want to do. We are now in a shutdown period. We are trying to uh, make the detectors much more better. The accelerator, we are upgrading the accelerator. So we are starting next year. We are supposed to start next year, but because of the COVID lockdown, we'll be starting in 2022 with a new, new um, run, new idea, new data. Then in 2025, again, we shut down for two to three years. We come up with new detectors. In Alice, we'll be making our focal and new ITS, new experiments. Then from 2032, 2033, we have a new detector, not this huge, large, uh, big magnet. We have a new silicon detector, detector which is going to come up. Beyond that, I don't know how, the, how many of you know, if you try future circular collider, CERN has come up with a new idea of making 100 kilometer tunnel to understand uh, this physics in much, much more detail. The Higgs physics, the uh, more towards higher energy, and also there is a component of understanding called plasma. So that is coming up in 2020 or 2040 or 2045, and there is a plan of 75 years plan has been made. This got recent approval in June council meeting of CERN. So I think it is going to go on. So this is a major endeavor. Now, just coming to the end, uh, almost at the end now. So, so I have Big Bang on the, on the left side. From Big Bang, things started. We see today's universe here after 13 billion of years after. In between, you have the W map. This is the cosmic microwave background. And we try to understand what is going on. We create in the laboratory, we call something a little bang here. And then we're trying to understand also at Large Hadron Collider and RIC, the system which is produced at the, at the little bang, how it compares to the big bang. This is the major field of research. And many of uh, me are our students are working on something like fluctuations and trying to understand both ways from both theories point and experimental point. Now, coming to the end, so I thought, I mean, I think I gave you a glimpse of what is going on to make the lockdown a little simpler for you. you we are not the only one who's a lockdown. The quarks have been locked down in the hadrons since long. So we are lo in this phase diagram picture, temperature and uh, density. The universe is here and we are locked down within hadrons. You would like to be in quark blown plasma. You'd like to go to um, the Allahabad or Puri or, or, or Mumbai or somewhere to be in the beach and in this uh, highly crowded thing. But we can't be there because it's because of the lockdown. But we hope to go there very soon. I hope things will be getting uh, better very soon. So we have new facilities coming up in future, as I told you. And the future is, uh, I think it's quite bright because the advances we make, the physics we make and all that. Thank you so much and uh, stay safe, stay well. I hope to get out of this lockdown phase very soon. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tapanda. Now I will request uh, our coordinator of the science lecture series. If you have a question from the audience, please ask to the speaker. Please. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so there are several questions. So this is first question from uh, Isita Chatterjee. And sir, she is asking, uh, uh, what is the significance of color of quark? First, and second question is, uh, what is the difference between blue up and red up quark? Yeah, this uh, I, I, we can pick up any simple physics book, particle physics book. You will find out uh, the color or the significance of color. This is basically when you try. Did not when they started explaining the different uh, um, physics uh, after the discovery of uh, quarks, they tried to understand. <laughs> Uh, the properties of the quark in terms of, or the properties of interactions in terms of quark ones. So 
many things were not explained properly. The cross section were not explained properly. So they wanted to invoke another uh, degrees of freedom, another quantum number, which is called the color quantum number. So you can write down the Lagrangian and the Hamiltonian in terms of the color, um, another degrees of freedom that was invoked. So then one can mathematically explain and understand the, um, the color. So I don't want to get into the details right now, but uh, those are there. Basically, the blue, green, and red, these are physicists' notion of explaining the color degrees of freedom. So there is no real color like that. So it is just invented red, green, and blue because if you put together, they become white or colorless. So that's how it was uh, invented. So just look up any book, you'll be able to pick up this uh, so fundamental uh, physics, why this was required. Okay. And sir, uh, she has another question. Does there exist plasma state of water molecule? Uh, no, as of we know, uh, no, because if you if you go to if you go to the water phase diagram, you have uh, yeah. This is the phase diagram which which has been discovered, which has been understood. We. Yeah, that's a good question, and we I don't I don't think we have anything like that. You have the electron plasma at very high energy. You have the you have the electron plasma which is there, but not um, from water. You can of course you can go to very very high energy, very high energy. You can make them them electron at some point to go to that stage. But in normal stage, they are in three stages. Okay, sir. So next we move to sir another question. Uh, uh, Rishi Rosan Bhardwaj from CSB, and uh, he is asking, uh, please tell in details about anti quark. Yeah, uh, for to every uh, matter, you have the antimatter. You have the electron, which is electron is uh, uh, electron is negative charge. What is the opposite of electron? Is positron. The same mass, the same everything, but you have negative charge. Okay. So that is the anti charge. So there is the anti matter. So the matter you have anti matter. matter anti matter together, you will have the energy. Energy will be the uh, particles only. Again. So anti matter is the opposite. So that in a simple form, charge is like here the personal charges. If you look at two third, the anti charge is minus two third. So up quark, up quark is two third. Um, you uh, up and anti quark of uh, up is minus two third the charge, so the antiparticle. So yeah, so the antimatter basically matter and antimatter they can't exist together. They annihilate uh, each other uh, in, when they are put together. So matter and antimatter exist in different form, but uh, you have for every quantum number there can be a, a antiparticle which have different quantum number. For example, red is one of the quantum number of quark. Anti-quarks can have anti-colors, like anti-red. So these are all mathematically, you can write down the all the formula and all that. So next, we move to another question uh, from Vivek Kumar from CSB. So he is asking uh, how quark gluon plasma reacts to strong magnetic fields when they got created. Okay, so this is a very interesting question and uh, we are still working on that. This is very recent uh, development in our field about uh, the, it, in fact, uh, they, they react to the magnetic field because you have the quark gluon plasma which are charged, uh, basically you have a lot of charge. You have the quarks uh, which are charged particles, yeah, personal charged particles. And if you put a magnetic field, very high magnetic field, of course, they will react to the magnetic field. So recently we have published papers where we have, uh, I mean, theories have been talking about the effect of magnetic field for several years, but in the experiment recently, what you see, when you have the two highly charged particles that are colliding, or they are uh, grazing collision, peripheral collision, which creates large electric field and large magnetic field, and we try to study what happens to the particles which are created, in that one. we see a difference. We see 
defect of the magnetic field. The effect of the magnetic field, yes, it is of course there. And, um, and the, the way the particles are coming out, the nature of the particles, um, uh, the magnetic field depends on the, and the particles that are coming out, uh, different magnetic fields get affect particles in a different way. So you have a heavy quark can come out in a different way, can interact with the magnetic field in a different way compared to a light quark. So that's what we try to see in our experiments. You have a very large magnetic field, very large electric field, very high spin of the particles in the beginning. So this is a current field of research. In fact, this is just ongoing, these kind of studies. Yes, it's a good question, but ongoing. So you can write to me, I'll forward to you the, the papers and you can look up the effect. Thank you. Yeah, so two more effects, chiral magnetic effect and also the polarization effect can be seen from the strong magnetic field. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, uh, our uh, uh, Vijay Rajji. Yes, sir. So, we heard, really heard very informative and motivational lecture of Dr. Tapan Nayakji from CERN, Geneva, Switzerland. And very interactive question and answer session. I will request our coordinator to give a vote of thanks to the speaker and participant. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Tapan Nayak, sir, uh, we are really inspired by your great work. Uh, big thanks to Dr. Nayak for inspiring uh, motivational talk. And I am sure the students and all present here will have uh, a lot of take away from this talk. Uh, I would like uh, to uh, take this opportunity to place on record my heartly thanks to Professor Venkatesh Singh and also my colleagues for their support and help. And finally, the wonderful students uh, who have turned up in such great number, not only from the Department of Physics and University of South Bihar, but also from other institutes. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Once again, I thank all for your support and cooperation. Thank you very much. So now okay. we can... So, start. dear participants and colleagues, this is all for now. We will see you next week, same day and same time with another wonderful speaker, Professor Dagnath Sahu of IIT Indore. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, sir.